Welcome to the fifth installment of the Core Reviews. Last time, we finished looking at the Core New Recruits with the Marauders. The Core Total Soldier began in 2013. The package theme is very reminiscent of Call of Duty. It's still a popular game, but maybe not as popular as back then. So what happened afterwards? Who's the bad guy team? Who are the new mystery figures? Let's check out the sequel to the new recruits, The Core Total Soldier. Lennard's Total Soldier, not to be confused with the core Total Soldier, was a bunch of soldiers with only 5 points of articulation. Some of these figures were re-released in Lennard's Alien Collection. There were also Total Soldier 10-inch figures, but unlike the Ultra Core, Lennard's Total Soldier 10-inch figures are nothing like the 1960s and 70s Joes with the cloth clothing. The uniforms on these were sculpted. The core Total Soldier kept some of the teams that were introduced in the new recruits. Out are the Shinobi Squad and Marauders. In are the Terror Team, Sea Squad, Flying Force, and Covert Command. Retired core agents include Ice, Sparks, Rip, and Eagle Eye. And what happened to Ghost and Jump? They were replaced during the new recruits with Spade and Boulder. There is no story as to what happened to the Marauders. The Corps don't have anyone to fight. Things would be like this for two years until the Core Elite was released and breathed life into the brand. To me, these were low times for the Core. No bios for the figures. No enemy figures. Plain and drab packaging. Dropped characters. No shinobi squad. Did I mention no villains? And the introduction of four top secret figures that were supposed to rock our world. But it's not all bad. I absolutely love the desert uniforms of Fixer and Shadow. Even though I wasn't a fan of Rucker's uniform in Elite, it makes total sense here with most of the Terror Team having the same jungle uniform. Before someone jumps down my throat about the no enemies thing, oh, you're just a Hasbro fanboy! I already know that the core started out without enemy figures and continued like that until the new recruits. You don't become the video core guy without doing this research. The core had just begun to use villains in the previous series. I'm sorry, but this shows that Lennard had lost interest in that line at the time. <laughs> Leave Lennard alone! <laughs> there was hardly any effort put in the core total soldier, but I'll do my best to bring some info on these guys. I hope you're all ready to jump into the core Total Soldier because we're going to kick things off with the Terror Team and its leader, Rucker version 3, again. Rucker was first introduced during the core New Recruits. He was originally called Ricochet, but that was changed quickly. Rucker. I'm still not sure what it means. I guess it could be that backpack thing that's called a rucksack. You fill it up with some stones or some junk and you take it for a walk. Or maybe he was named after frontman of Hootie and the Blowfish, Darius Rucker. Rucker version 3 has dark green jungle camo. I think this Rucker looks great with the Terra team. 
In Elite, he was by himself with these colors and I wasn't really a fan. Versions 1 and 2 of Rucker were released during the core new recruits. Other figures that share the same body with Rucker are Just In Case, Hawk, Jump, and Preston Packard from Kong Skull Island. Even though we don't have confirmation in Total Soldier, during the Core Elite, it was mentioned that during this time, he was still the leader of the Core. And later on, he would drop out of that position and give it to fellow Total Soldier Terra teammate, Rain. Rucker is also the leader of the Terra team, according to the new recruits. His teammates include Crash version 2, Rain version 3, and Rucker has the same articulation that we've seen with all the T Crotch Core figures. Okay, let's see how many points of articulation old Rucker here's got. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Well, what's next? Oh, I know. Thirteen, <laughs> fourteen, coming up. Fifteen, sixteen. Uh. And... Well... Seventeen? Well, looks like seventeen. That really was an interesting way to get more out of him. <laughs> and you know, this version of Rucker has been released so many times that losing one wouldn't put Rucker version 3 into the endangered species list. And it's true, Rucker version 3 continued on into Elite, Elite Tech Wars, and even the current line, Time Crisis. That's about 10 years that we've been getting the same Rucker, so let's just get some new colors in there like a Snow Rucker or a fake Rucker bot or something. Maybe even a Desert Rucker. Crash is one of my top favorite T-Crotch core figures. I love that he has that classic adventurer look to him. But, as the driver, he should have come with his own vehicle at all times. Crash was first introduced in the core new recruits back in 2007. He had a light green jungle uniform. Fast forward to the core total soldier, and now he's rocking the dark green fatigues. I think this is great with the team. Crash was known as a stunt driver, and came with some vehicles, though he should have come with just one to make him special. Other figures that share the same body as Crash are Flashbang, Rick Ranger, Fixer, and Jump Version 2 from Kong Skull Island. Crash version 3 was released in the Jumanji set with the Rhino. Some people are calling him Jack Black. There isn't much to say about Crash version 2. He comes in dark green fatigues, which is cool, cause it matches with the team now. But that's all I could say about him. 
When it comes to Total Soldier, the characters lose a lot of their personality, which makes it hard to talk about this set. Crash version 2 is a perfect example of this. Rain is one of those characters that comes late in the line and seems to take it over. I guess that's what a ninja does, moves in silently before striking. Rain began in the core new recruits. He was the leader of the now defunct Shinobi squad. His teammates included Decoder and Mirage. He's now part of the new Terra team, which includes Rucker, Crash, and the bazooka obsessed. Rain version 3 now has a camo uniform and armor. He's also one of the few figures with proprietary weapons a dark green sword, throwing star, and pistol. Other figures that have this body, besides version 1 and 2 of Rain, is version 1 and 2 of Mirage. Afterwards, version 4 of Rain would have a mixed body of Spade and Road Rash and Mirage and Rain. In the next series, the Core Elite, Rain would take over for Rucker as leader of the Core. Moving on from the Terra team into the Flying Force, the Core Total Soldiers Flying Force includes Spade, Condor, and the Mustachioed We'll start as usual with the leader, Spade version 2. Like most characters from the Core Total Soldier, Spade was first introduced in the second part of the Core New Recruits. The second part of the Core New Recruits introduced members with wearable weapon features. These characters included Spade, Road Rash, Decoder, Rain, and Mirage. Unlike most of the core Total Soldier figures, he comes with proprietary accessories. A grapple gun, a knife, and a small pistol. These accessories are all molded in tan plastic. He can carry all of his accessories at once. The grapple gun has a peg, so it can peg onto his back. He has a leg sheath for his knife, and a holster for his pistol. Technically, Spade version 2 was first introduced during the core new recruits red packaging, but he became more common during the core total soldier. Rain version 4 and James Conrad from Kong Skull Island share the same torso as Spade and Road Rash. Spade version 2 looks much cooler than version 1. That version looks more like Don Carnage from Tailspin, or the more recent DuckTales. I'm not a big fan of this character's body type. The boots look cartoonishly big, and his legs come close together. Now it's time to look at one of the core veterans, Condor version 3. Condor was first introduced way back in the Core Special Forces. He was part of the Wasps, along with Marauder, Vulture. Condor is unique because he has been used as a Monarch helicopter pilot for Kong Skull Island, and he even pulled double duty as Maverick and the Bogey for the Top Gun set. Condor version 3 does not come with proprietary weapons. As of this video, there are six versions of Condor. Special Forces, New Recruits, Total Soldier Through Time Crisis, Kong Skull Island, and Twice for Top Gun. That's right, this version of Condor has shown up in the Core Total Soldier and Elite, the Core Elite Tech Wars, and the core time crisis plus repaints so yes we need to stop getting these outdated soldiers the other figure that share the same body with condor is his old buddy and nemesis vulture 
I feel that version 3 of Condor is probably the plainest and, I don't know, the least interesting of the Condor figures. My favorite is definitely Maverick and Kong Skull Island, but from the core, I would have to say that I like the Blue New Recruits version best. Since the core total soldiers ranks are much lower than usual, we are sailing through these teams. I mean, without looking at the top secret figures yet. We are moving into the oceans with my favorite team, the Sea Squad. The core total soldier Sea Squad has had a facelift, leaving Gills as the only original member. The other teammates are Shinobi Squad Zone Decoder and Looking at the leader of the team, Gills is a longtime veteran of the Corps, beginning with the Corps Special Forces. He was part of the Orcas, Oceanic, Recon, and Covert Assault Squad. That team consisted of Justin Case, Gills, and the Corps Diver, which I like to call Nosferatu. Afterwards, he was part of the first C-Squad team during the Core New Recruits. This team includes Sparks, Rip, and Gills. Gills does not come with proprietary weapons. The other figure that shares his body is Nosferatu. As of this video, there are four versions of Gills. Version 1 is from the Core Special Forces. Version 2 is from the Core New Recruits. Version 3 is from the Core Total Soldier. And Version 4 is from the Core Elite, the Core Elite Tech Wars, and the Core Time Crisis. I know that Gills isn't technically in the Core Special Forces, so what do we call him? Generic Diver? Core Diver 1 or 2, just like Nosferatu? This makes the figure much worse and omits what could be some very interesting history on a really cool character. During the Core Total Soldier, the Core Agents have been all over the place. A ninja here, a ninja there. We're gonna check out the man who started as a ninja, but after this, his body would become a staple as a core default aquatic suit. Let's check out Decoder version 3. The core Total Soldier Sea Squad is a mix of new and old characters for the time. The team includes core veteran Gills, the ex ninja Decoder, and the mysterious craptastic 4 member Decoder first became a core agent during the New Recruit series. His original name was Slash, but was quickly changed to Decoder. The name Slash was later given to a core super soldier curse figure, uh, Slash. Decoder got two versions during the New Recruit's time as part of the short-lived Shinobi squad. He was released at the time when the new sculpts had wearable weapons. There were three body types. The Road Rash Spade body type, the Mirage Rain body type, and the Decoder body type. He didn't come with a wearable weapons feature, but he technically did hold his proprietary weapons, a pair of arm blades. And these things are pretty loose. Sure, they'll stay on there if you don't touch them, but if you decide to play with this figure, those arm blades are gonna come right off. He is in a turquoise blue matching gills. The arm blades are pretty cool as an underwater weapon and probably help in swimming. What's funny about this figure is that even though he is now part of the underwater team, he still carries around a pair of nunchucks. 
I know that it's just in the skull, but man, just imagine those underwater chuck moves. Very effective weapons. There is one other character that shares the same body as Decoder. The core elite, Diesel. Decoder is a cool figure, and his sculpt has always had a wetsuit look to it. So in a way, it makes sense to change him into an underwater type character. The core total soldier would be his final appearance as of this video. Our first Craptastic Four member is a cool looking figure with the worst articulation in the line, Reaper. He wasn't always a bad guy. He was originally part of the C Squad, which included Gills, Decoder, and Reaper. He has his vest painted orange, hinting that it's a life vest. This version of Reaper only lasted one series. He has one accessory, some kind of a machine gun, and he always comes with this gun. His articulation is his arms, and that's it. There are three versions of Reaper. The Core Total Soldier, the Core Elite, and Rampage. In the Core Elite, he became part of the curse by having nanomachines implanted. Reaper is a cool looking figure with an awesome head sculpt. The core community would love to have an articulated version of him, and they voice that out. But as usual, it falls on deaf ears. Our next Craptastic Four member looks like your typical cool guy, Recoil. He originally came to play after the core went to the T-Crotch builds. Later, he became a static figure or as some like to romanticize, action post. Oh yeah. During this time, he became part of the Covert Command, which included Fixer, Shadow, Boulder, and Recoil. This version of Recoil continued into the Core Elite and the Core Elite Tech Wars. He has two accessories, dual pistols. These are my favorite pistols in the line. There are five versions of recoil. Twice in the core special forces, first brunette and later blonde. The core total soldier through the core tech wars. Rampage, where he looks like Creed from The Office in that episode where he dyes his hair and the Core Time Crisis. During the Core Time Crisis, Recoil became part of the curse. Or maybe he was exposed to being a curse agent. We'll look at that in the Core Time Crisis. Or will we? This hombre is my old pal Dan Classic's least favorite of the bunch. Buckshot! As he put it, Buckshot has the same articulation as old Star Wars figures. He comes with two accessories, a revolver and a knife. The revolver is pretty sweet. He is part of the Flying Force, which includes Spade, Condor, and Buckshot. Something that's always bothered me about Buckshot is his lousy mustache. I thought it was badly painted, but it's badly sculpted. He looks like an old-timey pilot with the old-timey football helmet. Yeah, not really a fan of his. But more of a fan considering who is the next Craptastic Four agent. Bazooka, bazooka, bazooka obsessed, bazooka obsessed. Our final Craptastic Four member looks like a thrifty solid snake. 
Dozer. He has always been part of the terror team, except for that time when he went Hollywood with Kong Skull Island. The terror team at the time included Rucker, Crash, Rain, and Dozer. Dozer comes with a bazooka. There were two versions of Dozer, Total Soldier, Through Time Crisis, and Kong Skull Island. Later on, like the other Craptastic Four members, Dozer would get a backstory and specialty. Here's the gist of his background. Some guy from Brooklyn, New York, loves explosions, got kicked out of school, and joined the Corps. The end. And his specialty is... Bazooka Obsessed. Bazooka, 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 Bazooka. Bazooka Obsessed. Bazooka Obsessed. He can't stand up on his own, even with that extra piece of plastic under his lifted foot. I just really, really hate this figure. He's just the worst. Even his bazooka sucks. What's with the spikes around the rocket part? What a waste of plastic. It's time to look at our last team of the Corps Total Soldier, the Covert Command. This team seems to be intact from the second iteration of the team, including Fixer, Shadow, Boulder, and adding the Craptastic Four member, Recoil. Taking a look at the leader of the team, Fixer kept his job as leader of the Covert Command. He began his career in the New Recruits, continued on in his desert uniform in the Total Soldier line, and recently he finally got a version 3 in the Core Time Crisis. Fixer looks sharp in his desert fatigues. As with most Core Total Soldier figures, Fixer no longer has any kind of weapons assigned to him. Other figures that share the same body as Fixer are Flashbang, Rick Ranger, Crash, and Jump Version 2 from Kong Skull Island. Here's a core member that we already looked at way back in 2015, Boulder. Boulder's design was based in an old employee of Lenard. This was the only time this would happen, at least at the time of this video. He has two versions, the New Recruits Blue version and the Desert Total Soldier Through Time Crisis version. He does come with proprietary weapons, a baton and shotgun. Other figures with Boulder version 2's body type include Boulder version 1. Boulder is still not one of my favorite core figures. His features are way too chunky for my liking. Some sets of the core Total Soldier come with backgrounds and vehicles that we've already looked at. The backgrounds bring the military environment to life. There is nice details on the outside. One sticker says Elite and the other Bravo Post 22. These have some very nice detail on the outside. The inside also has some detail, but it's not painted as usual. I like these backgrounds a lot, and I like that the figures can actually use them on either side. This is the kind of thing I would have loved as a kid. Time to look at the last core Total Soldier figure, Shadow Version 2. This figure would become famous in the Core Elite. Sometime in between Total Soldier and Elite, Shadow would get Curse Nano Machines implanted and become Plague, leader of the Curse. And it's been said many, many times that Plague was originally the name of a marauder from the new recruits. Shadow shares his body with Large Sarge, Firestorm, Eagle Eye, and himself, Plague. This is the last version of Shadow 
to be released as of this video. He would be released as Plague from the Core Elite to Time Crisis. I absolutely love this version of Shadow. I couldn't say if it's because he's uncommon, and it's nice to see him in something other than black, or if it's just because he looks great with his other teammates. Shadow is a majorly popular character. My theory is because he looks like a ninja, and ninjas are almost always cool. I hope we get more desert outfitted core members in the future. This is the kind of figure that makes the core very cool. The Sledgehammer is a large missile with a launcher. This version of the Sledgehammer has lights and sounds. The rocket is attached to the launcher with a screw. Without it, the rocket is very loose. The launcher itself only has one moving part, the part that holds the rocket. Like a lot of Lennard vehicles or accessories, the launcher doesn't have wheels. It has stickers that show 11 launches and it looks like it got 5 hits and 6 misses. The launcher also has a winged core logo and it looks like this guy is CRWR 118. The missile itself is called the Sledgehammer and I guess the model is NXS 33. And another Lennard hallmark, the other side doesn't get any attention. The core total soldier may have been an in-between line, but I don't think Lennard should have shoved their flagship brand aside. This was a dark time for the core, but what came next would be one of the best things to happen to the brand since the original vintage figures. <laughs>